I'll tell him, welcome to the promised land. As you probably know too well, and he knows very well, Moses was a great leader of the Jewish people. But he had two problems. One, that he was stuttering, he couldn't speak properly. The other one was that he was a bit tone deaf. So after he received the Ten Commandments, God told him, now go, take your people, and bring them to Transylvania. But because he was deaf, he couldn't hear well, so he went to Transjordania. <laughs> Hence all the problems in the region. Dear Mr. Prager, Adrian, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, our keynote speaker today hardly needs any introduction, but he's a great storyteller in the grand tradition of Martin Buber. And he believes, among many other things, that happiness is a serious problem. That's why tonight I, sh I should like to put forward my introduction to this extraordinary debate in the form of a narrative. I'll tell you a story. You're getting used to that. It's a story for children written by Kipling, but which is very rarely read as a moral allegory for the grown-ups. The story sounds like this. In the thick jungle of the Indian subcontinent, a delicate boy was born from two unknown parents. It is first Akila, the affectionate wolf, and then Bagheera, the solitary panther, who take care of the abandoned child. With their help, Mowgli becomes an exploratory teenager who later embarks on a journey filled with anxieties and surprises. Gradually, the jungle boy discovers the promises of the wildlife. Curious by nature, he's trying to fit somewhere, using each and every adventure to sharpen his survival instincts. He first escapes from the grip of Ka, the witch snake, only to find great company in the presence of Baloo, the Epicurean bear. Baloo, the bear necessities of life, will come to you. Now, he is the teacher of simplicity, you might think, Baloo. He tells the man cub how to eat, how to dance, how to have fun. Baloo wants, as I said, just the bare necessities of life. But Mowgli seems to aim higher. Though he is small, he thinks big. In contrast, the bear cannot think or cannot conceptualize, for instance, the threefold structure of human temporality, past, present, and future. He can't do that. So he goes for what's expedient not for a sense of, pu of purpose. Baloo lives in the here and now, while the astute, agile, and ambitious teenager wants to leave behind what? A legacy. A legacy in the history of human civilization. At some point, while he's singing, the foxy bear says, and I quote, don't spend your time looking around for something you want that can't be found. It's the advice that we sometimes get. It's the advice which lacks imagination. It's a recipe for disaster. It's a recipe for sloth coming from someone who doesn't want his fellow traveler to grow up. Unlike the orangutan King Louis, Mowgli, the man cub, understands that freedom is beyond the bare necessities of life, is beyond necessity. The experience of freedom, let me repeat that, is beyond necessity, beyond the burdens of necessity. So Mowgli knows that freedom means to choose, and more importantly, to choose well. Now, I'll come to an end by telling you the final scene from Walt Disney's superb film, when Maybe you recall, Baloo tries to prevent Mowgli from encountering the girl, Shanti, the beautiful girl singing by the lake. When 
the rendezvous happens, Baloo gets scared. He's afraid of the unknown, and he's unable to understand the labor of love, as St. Paul put it. A mesmerized Mowgli is about to exit the jungle, but not before Shanti, the girl, finishes her poem. Listen to this. Father's hunting in the forest, I could just sing probably, mother's cooking in the home, I must go and fetch the water till the day that I'm grown. And then, she's making a prophecy, then I'll have a handsome husband and a daughter of my own. And I'll send her fetch the water, I'll be cooking in the home. This is Walt Disney, 1967, before the radical secularization of Europe and North America. It's amazing. What do we get from this story? Well, first and foremost, the notion that life has a meaning only within a consensual and loyal relationship. It's not any relationship. It's a relationship construed as a covenant in terms of mutual affection and celebration of the gift of life. I shall have a handsome husband and a daughter of my own. So Mowgli, while he's leaving the jungle, he's not just listening to a soft, beautiful, and unmistakable feminine voice, but he hearkens unto the promise of love, family, and human flourishing. It's only within this context that discipline becomes liberating and toil becomes a source of joy. So let me wrap it up for you. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, tonight, as we speak, right now, you are embarking on Mogil's project of self-discovery through pain, sacrifice, and love. Pain in confronting the adversities of life. Sacrifice in building a better future. Love for those you have been united with. It is a story, the one I've just told you, which tells us all that my, what makes us unique in this world is not the fancy shoes we are wearing. It's not the tie. It's not the clothes. It's not the iPhone that we use in order to take selfies. It's not the car that we are driving that makes us unique. All objects in this world are replaceable. All industrial products are soulless items produced by the machines. Sonia, for instance, the robot, might smile to you, but it will always be a fake, cold, and replaceable smile. So in the post-human future of technocracy, which dawns upon us, we have to maintain the, that the only given absolute in opposition to relativism of our human experience, the only given absolute is the human person from the day of its conception to its natural death. What makes you all unique is the love you give every day to your spouse, to your, pres to your parents, to your friends, to your mentor, to your neighbor, but also to your enemies. It is only love that makes the person you are having dinner with a really special one. It's only love that gives us the antidote to the secular relativism of today. All you need is love. Ladies and gentlemen, for us all tonight, Dennis Prager. Thank you.